Hi everyone, uh, I'm Sayed Mustafa Safdarnajad. I'm a PhD student at Chemical Engineering Department at Brigham Young University. I work with Dr. John Hedengreen and Dr. Larry Baxter on dynamic optimization of cryogenic carbon capture and integrating this uh, CO2 removal system with uh, conventional and renewable power plants. So my presentation includes five main sections. First of all, I'll go over the, uh, why this project is important. Then I'll talk about the challenges that power sector uh, has to address. And then uh, we'll talk about the, the scope of this study and uh, what, we are want, what we want to maximize here. And then I'll, at the end, I'll talk about the results and possible future works. So why this project is important? Uh, maybe one of the main reasons uh, for uh, for the importance of uh, this project is that the uh, oil and gas uh, reservoirs are depleting very fast, and we need to think about uh, other other possible uh, energy supplies. Uh, for instance, uh, if you consider the gr growth rate uh, from 1990 to 2012 for the renewable power uh, sources, we'll find out that this growth rate is equal to 733 percent which is huge therefore uh, we have to develop uh, the infrastructure required for these renewable power sources another reason for using uh, more renewable power sources is that uh, we have still increased rate in increasing rate in the CO2 emission as you can see in this slide 1.1% uh, increase in global emission uh, was observed in 2012 compared to a 2011 level and if you want to know how uh, much the electricity generation sector uh, contribute in this uh, uh, CO2 emission, I should say that it's about 38% for instance for the US which is a significant amount and we, uh, that's, that causes the governments to enforces new regulations for power plants for instance Clean Air Act was uh, enforced last year for new power plants or just recently in June 2014 EPA enforced another law clean power plan for the existing power uh, fossil fuel power plants which they have to uh, decrease their CO2 emission by 30 percent by 2030 when you compare it to 2005 so what are the solutions for uh, for increasing uh, usage of the renewable power sources or uh, restri restricting the CO2 emissions? There, there are three main uh, possible solutions thought so far. Uh, one of them is shifting from coal to natural gas. The other one is uh, increased utilization of the renewable energy sources and the last one uh, is to have a CO2 removal system integrated with power plants if you think about the first two options that I just said it, it is believed that the uh, main reason for 4% reduction in CO2 emission in the US in 2012 uh, were because of shifting from coal to natural gas or increased utilization of renewable power sources uh, so next I want to talk about uh, what, what are the challenges for the power se sector that they have to uh, address and possible solutions to that. So the main challenges for the intermittent renewable power sources, mainly wind and solar, uh, are that they, they are intermittent and they can't be predicted over a long um, course of time and the, qu the question to how to ma maximize the value and con uh, ma value and contribution of the wind or solar power is still not well answered. Two possible solutions are thought for this one, uh, for this challenge. One of them is to integrate the renewable sources with uh, reliable conventional or uh, thermal or nuclear power sources or using uh, the storage system to uh, store renewable power sources when they are available and then releasing this stored energy when they are needed. The other challenge that the power plants uh, has to address in future is 
uh, that how the CO2 removal system impact their power output. They, they should consider the CO2 removal system in their calculations because most of them are in, in energy intensive. So one possible solution to this issue is to develop and look for new technologies for CO2 removal. For instance, cryogenic carbon capture, which is currently under development and uh, sustainable energy solution, is one new technology that uh, separates CO2 from the flue gas by desublimation. We s uh, freeze out the CO2 and then we separate the solid CO2 from the slur slurry and we melt it and pressurize it and send it to containment wells. Uh, there are several advantages uh, for the cryogenic carbon capture in comparison to other physical and chemical absorption systems. The main one is that it consumes less energy. It has energy storage uh, capability. Uh, it, we can manage the energy loss of the CO2 removal uh, by using the stored LNG to drive the process during peak demand. And also, this process has rapid load change capability. This one is, is specifically very important for us. If you consider the fluctuations that wind power has, this, this becomes more important because wind power goes from 100% to 0% in just a minute or five minutes. It, this, uh, so it's a really big deal to, ha to find a system that uh, can capture these fluctuations. And also the main, the, the, the other advantage that CCC has is, is that it can be scaled to large scale systems. In this case, we, we will consider a uh, power plant with 1200 power, uh, megawatt pow power plant. And the LNG tank size is only 21,000 uh, meter cube, which is really small compared to commercial LNG tanks. Then I want to introduce uh, you about the introduce you the big picture of this study and talk about what we are trying to maximize here. As I said, uh, here we uh, optimize and integrate the CCC process with power generation units dynamically, and th those power units include coal and gas fired power power plants and wind power in this case. Like most of the CO2 capture systems, the capture efficiency is considered to be 90% and we try to maximize the operational profit of the hybrid system while we are trying to uh, meet the residential and CCC electricity demand. Uh, here is a big picture of the uh, hybrid system. As you can see here, we import natural gas uh, during off-peak hours, we liquefy that, and then we store the ex extra LNG uh, in the tank, and then the rest of that goes to CCC. And then when we are in the peak hours, we take some of the required LNG from the tank, it goes through the C CCC process, it becomes a vapor, does some heat exchange in the recuperator again, and then this uh, natural gas here, is a warm natural gas that could be either uh, combusted uh, partially or could be recirculated in the system or could even be sent back to the pipeline with a higher pur purification. And also, uh, so we, we consider this uh, uh, CCC LNG production system with coal power unit and uh, wind power unit as a, as a whole. And uh, you see in the CCC process, we have one external refrigeration cycle, which we use it to store en uh, energy in the form of LNG. And we have an internal refrigeration loop as well, but we don't store energy for this refrigerant. Too. So like I said, we pro overproduce the LNG when the electricity uh, demand is low. And then we use that uh, stored LNG during peak hours and uh, with these two approaches, with this approach, we can uh, save and help the power plant to meet the demand, the total demand in two ways. One, by ramping down the refrigeration compressor demand during peak hours, and one by, and the other one by uh, production of gas power in a gas turbine uh, during peak hours. 
so after we do the optimization uh, if you consider the power elec versus electricity demand uh, we get this graph so the blue line is the coal power plant uh, coal power production and the same one is the gas power this uh, red dashed one is wind power and uh, this black one is the residential demand and the uh, purple circles and uh, uh, purple circles is the total power production and the green line is the total demand as you can see here the total electricity demand of both residential and CCC uh, is met uh, which is great and we, do, we don't have any wasted energy you see there is no overproduction of uh, power in any time another important results that we see here is that we utilize 100 percent of the available wind you see in this in this period of time that uh, wind contributes in meet, uh, in meeting the total power and coal power decrease uh, here and also uh, since this op optimization can uh, see uh, the time horizon when we are at hour 48 it can see that we have some uh, wind coming online at uh, around hour uh, 72 therefore it starts to decrease the coal power uh, a few hours before wind comes online and then the energy sorting version of the CCC process shows its contribution in the form of this natural gas power production but when we don't have this pow uh, wind power available here at the, at the end of the second day we have to keep the coal power at a higher rate for a longer portion of uh, time uh, during the day which which is not uh, very good so uh, you see here that uh, by using the energy sorting uh, version of the CCC process we can shift wind power from a time where when the uh, value of the wind is not as much as we want to a time that wind power has a higher uh, value and a higher contribution uh, during the day and this is very important and uh, this will help stabilize the uh, grid by uh, capturing the fluctuations of the wind power so if you look at the uh, top left graph, th this shows the trend of the natural gas imported to the plant and the bottom one is the natural gas exported to the plant. So the, during off-peak hours, we, uh, we import more natural gas to the plant and liquefy that and that uh, corresponds with this increase in the LNG inventory in the tank. And then when, it's, when the electricity load is uh, higher, we, assort, we, we use uh, some of the stored LNG and take that from the pipeline and then that uh, does the heat exchange required in the CCC process and then as I said it could be either co uh, combusted in the gas turbine or could be sent back to the pipeline uh, for, the, for the peak hours or could be recirculated uh, in the system. The interesting point in this graph is that all of these decisions are made by the economical evaluations of the of the system we do not force anything here we do not force uh, the storage time or the uh, the or filling the ta uh, tank the time that tank is filled so this is really interesting that uh, optimizer chooses uh, to operate like that uh, based on uh, the economical evaluation here is the another uh, another energy storing uh, features of the CCC process coming uh, online. You see, we have most of the demand of the refrigeration compressor in off peak hours, and then during peak hours we save that energy. We use that saved energy, and we turn down the uh, compressor. And actually, we don't turn it. Optimizer chooses to turn it off. So this is also really important because uh, we, with the energy storage capability of the CCC, we manage the time that the refrigeration cycle uh, should work. 
if you compare the profitability of the system uh, f uh, with uh, with the storage and without the storage we find out that uh, without the storage tank uh, we can we can get fifteen thousand uh, dollar per hour which that profit increased by 135 percent uh, when we consider the storage tank which is significant uh, especially if you consider that this difference uh, is equivalent to 2.1 cents per kilowatt hour uh, this becomes very important when you consider the cost of construction of the CCC process which is 2 cents per kilowatt hour this means that uh, by having a storage system we can uh, we can pay for the cost of construction of the CCC plant this is really important for us because it uh, implies that uh, we don't have to worry much about the capital cost of the CCC plan because it's going to uh, return back soon. And possible future works and that might be uh, explored uh, later on uh, include consideration of baseline steam boilers uh, for the hybrid system or application of the proposed system for a smart grid integration and also in exploring the uncertainty in prices and wind power data. At the end, uh, I want to appreciate the Sustainable Energy Solutions who funded this project and also I want to appreciate graduate and undergraduate students at Brigham Young University who helped me progress in this project. Uh, I would be happy to answer any questions. This is my email address and you can also see our group uh, web address.